coming into this event this evening, there was a, a lot of political heat taking place, and, and uh, the center got tarred with the brush of being a front for the Muslim Brotherhood and the like. And I can assure you uh, that is nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, we, but that doesn't mean that we don't meet with all sides and all parties in these conflicts where we're trying to bridge differences. Uh, it's, uh, but we're captive to no one, believe me. It's one of the beauties about it being an NGO. You can do the right thing for the right reason at the right time without regard for the politics. You just have to raise the funds to be able to do it. <laughs> it's, it's a big if. Um, but um, the fact that we meet with everybody is driven by a simple premise that we share, and that is that Everybody on any given side in a conflict isn't bad. And those who are bad aren't bad all the time. So we play to the angels of their higher nature. And this, uh, uh, the other thing too is something that women know from birth and men occasionally figure out is that all things are relational. And uh, knowing this and operating with that premise, it's made for, for some pretty strange bedfellows. Uh, I established a, a very uh, deep uh, uh, personal friendship with somebody very highly placed in the government of Sudan in the north, the Islamic regime, when we were dealing with them. And it's one of those kind of things where it's unspoken, but it goes beyond just trust. It goes beyond the fact that you would intervene if, uh, and put your own life at stake if, if his life was at stake. And same thing for uh, our Wahhabi partner in Pakistan, prominent Wahhabi leader. But he put his life on the line any number of times, taking us into the very radical areas. And we have this unspoken bond. Well, I have always felt, though not involved the same way, but I felt the same kind of bond with Faisal Rauf. And it stems from uh, both of us uh, having participated uh, in a 10-day visit to Iran back in 2003. It was an Abrahamic delegation that was headed by Cardinal Ted McCarrick, and Abrahamic in that it included Christian, Muslims, and Jews. And uh, over the course of those 10 days, I, I came to find out about the book that he was writing, which is what, What's Right with Islam? Uh, that later segued into a later book was what's right with Islam is what's right with America. But I could tell that he was putting a lot of study and heart and soul into trying to uh, build the bridges between what American values were all about and what the heart of Islam was all about. And I really admired that. We've had numerous encounters since. And it <clears throat> caused me no uh, little grief to see him uh, taking so much heat around this ground zero mosque business, you know? Now, there, were, there was a lot of misinformation relating to that. But the basic idea was to try to establish an Islamic community center, much very similar to the Jewish community centers that you found sprinkled out throughout the city of New York and, and elsewhere. And uh, very similar in providing a multi-faith space where people could come together and, and a safe space and to be, begin to understand one another better without the, the, the religious uh, barriers. Uh, there were two important differences, though. One is that, uh, indeed, there was going to be a prayer space for Muslims, and uh, that's a kind of a practical consideration when you're talking about people coming to, and they have to pray five times a day. There's got to be a place to pray. And the other one was uh, a departure from the Jewish community centers. The Jewish community centers, their boards were all Jewish. In this case, they were all to be multi-faith. You know, this is a real attempt to bring multi-faith reconciliation together. Well, because of uh, sort of a falling out between the uh, gentleman who was sort of brokering that initiative uh, and, and Faisal over religious values, including the makeup of the board, uh, Faisal uh, left and uh, is no longer involved in that and hasn't been for some period of time now. But even though he departed from that location, he's carried that vision elsewhere. And uh, I've asked him as uh, part of his accepting the award tonight to say just a few words about that. 
But uh, I asked him in the course of our conversation, I said, were there any surprises? I said, what, what surprised you most? He said, well, there are two things that really surprised me. He says, was the degree to which that whole episode was politicized, you know, when we've got this deep, deep held commitment to separation of church and state, but it got very politicized, and I think for understandable reasons. But the other thing, too, was that he was so amazed at the public support that he actually got. He said the mail uh, supporting this effort they received, was it was 100 to 1 versus those who were opposed to it, which was I thought was rather amazing. He also mentioned something that I would not have thought was the case, but that America's stock with Islam actually advanced mightily as a result of that episode. And the reason was, was because the Jewish mayor of New York City was supportive of it, and the Christian president of the United States was supportive of it. And that meant a lot to them. So, you know, um, Faisal in 2010 uh, in Foreign Policy magazine was voted one of the top uh, global thinkers in the world. A year later, Time magazine named him one of the 100 most influential people in the world. So we're talking about a man who is very gifted. He's got great capabilities, but he also has a wonderful heart. And I have been uh, singularly impressed since, since the day I knew him of the degree to which he is trying to empower the moderates to counter the extremists, and that's a very important thing. And then the other is to build bridges between Islam and the West. And bridge building is what we need to be about going forward. So if you would please come up, Faisal, I'd love to present this award to you. says the Faith in, a Faith in Action Award presented to Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf for his inspiring leadership in interfaith peace building. International Center for Religion and Diplomacy, May 30, 2014. In the name of the merciful, compassionate God, praise be to God, Lord of the worlds. We invoke his blessings and greetings on all of his prophets and messengers, upon their families and companions, for God is the God of all of creation and of all of the prophets. He is the God of Adam and Noah, the God of Abraham, Ishmael and Isaac, the God of Moses and Aaron, the God of Jesus Christ and his mother Mary, who is regarded by Muslims as the noblest and most exalted of all women, and the God of Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon all these noble souls. My dear brother, Doug Johnston, whom I adore and respect, and for as you can see why, uh, my dear sister and brother, Shaista and Ray Mahmoud, and by the way, Shaista, you don't have to wait to give me an award to invite me to your home. Uh, to honored guests, Robert McFarland, uh, my dear friends, many, too, too many to be counted, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first, I must thank you very much for this award. But I also would like to say it has a very deep and special significance to me. Um, but you have helped me explain why in the work that you have done and in Brian's marvelous presentation. It not only... Uh, recognizes the special relationship and common bond that you and I share, Doug, but also because it recognizes that religion in general and our religions in particular play a major role. After 9-11, and in the many venues I was invited to speak on uh, and how to improve U.S.-Muslim world relations, I pointed out that if U.S. policy to the Muslim world did not factor in the role of religion, our policies would be ignoring a key factor in the often complex equations of political calculus. 
for how could we have a coherent foreign policy towards countries like Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Pakistan? Or how would we be effective in trying to negotiate a peace settlement between Israel, Palestine, and its Arab neighbors if we ignored the role of religion in all of these societies and its role in shaping the, the contours of the various conflicts? We are, as we all believe as people of faith, we are divinely ordained stewards on earth. Muslims use the word khalifa, translated as vicegerents. And as such, we have a duty, a duty to maintain it, a duty to fix its problems, what our Jewish friends call tikkun olam. Although this duty devolves upon all of humanity, Muslims have a legal concept called fard kifaya, which means that a select few who perform this task on behalf of all of humanity release all of humanity from this all-important obligation. And I believe Doug is one of our key people like that who fulfill this obligation, and those of you who support him and support us in this all-important and worthwhile effort. So to all of you here who are supporting this work, I salute you. It is also the defining common ground of the space wherein ICRD and my organization, the Crowd Initiative, work. Your commitment, your continued support of this important endeavor is something that is essential. But as you know, and in spite of the many important accomplishments we can point to, we have yet a long way to go. And some of the problems we have tried to work on seem to keep getting worse, as if you read the newspapers. And while disappointing to many, it just means that we must try harder and for which we need your continued and unflagging commitment and support. So let me at this point, uh, in response to Doug's request, uh, share with you two major projects of the Crowdub Initiative that we are rather excited about. Projects that have attracted both very strong attention, positive and negative. I've been told that that is a sign that you are doing something really important. One is the governance project, or the Islamic governance project, which seeks to define what the Islamic State means, and it seeks also to do for American Islam and American Muslims the analogy to what the American Jesuit theologian scholar John Courtney Murray did for Catholics. Murray argued that Jesus' famous dictum, render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and render unto God what belongs to God, was proof that the separation of church and state, as understood by the American founding fathers, is, and therefore must be, in fact authentic to Catholic doctrine. American Catholic bishops deployed such and other arguments that he was a major spokesman for, that he had crafted, to urge the Vatican in the middle 20th century to move away from their previous adherence to the notion of non-separation between church and state, and all of this was part of what led to Vatican II in 1965. This project bridges, also bridges the American social contract with the Islamic social contract by linking those self-evident truths articulated in our American Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal, endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights, among which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These ideas are linked with the six objectives of Islamic law called the maqasid al-sharia in our jurisprudence all of which were fully articulated by Muslim legal doctors or doctors of law five centuries before our founding fathers drafted the Constitution. Muslim legal scholars say that all of God's laws and all of God's commandments and prohibitions, including the Ten Commandments, which, yes, are part of our creed and belief as well, part of Islam, are all about protecting and furthering six unalienable God-given human rights, the right to life, 
the right to human dignity, which maps rather well with the American concept of human liberty, the right to property, which was part of the original draft of the American Declaration of Independence, until it was edited out and, trans and uh, transposed with pursuit of happiness, the right to a family, the right to an intellect or intellectual pursuits, and the right to practice one's religion. These six objectives of Islamic law, which I said are called in Arabic maqasid al-sharia, fit very well indeed with the American Declaration, which is why I inform Muslim audiences in the Muslim world that America is a very maqasid al-sharia compliant country. I agree. And the reason why is because this crafted expression of a foundational bond that makes us Muslims and many Muslims in America very comfortable here has unfortunately been deliberately mislabeled by our detractors as meaning that I intend to introduce or to impose Sharia law in America and again focusing only on the 7th century penal code which as a matter of fact many Muslim scholars have argued has not only been mis grossly misunderstood, but should no longer be applied in the way it is currently understood. The Muslim world application of, the sh of this project is to bridge the ideological divide between Islamic political parties and the secular political parties that has deeply fragmented and polarized countries like Egypt, between the Muslim Brotherhood and the current regime. Uh, this project is also intended to steer the discourse in Muslim-majority nations away from a focus on the implementation of the, what's called the Hudud punishments as a definition of an Islamic state to one based on justice and Islam's positive law and these six objectives of the law. Uh, Cordoba's other cutting project is the Cordoba House project that uh, Doug asked me to speak about, which is also inspired by our predecessors of the Christian and Jewish faith as they struggled to evolve from immigrant Catholic and Jewish faith communities to US-based Catholic and Jewish faith communities. In my study of American religion, I learned that the YMCA, and at that time the YWCA, because genders were still segregated, men and women, and Jewish community centers played major roles in redefining and evolving the American Christian and American Jewish communities from immigrant to an American faith identity that took them beyond the parochial religious traditional denominational definition and integrated them into the broader American community at large. It was now time, I thought, that we American Muslims established a place that would do the same for Muslims, namely, to help evolve an American Islamic identity that was authentic to our Islamic faith tradition, but restated in the American legal, social, and various cultural modalities such as music, architecture, and clothing. In other words, a way of a way, a, a way, or one way, of being true to what it means to be a quintessential Muslim, yet true at the same time to what it means to be quintessentially American. Crafting such an identity would provide a meaningful model for those cultural enclaves of immigrant Muslims struggling to help their children assimilate into American society without shedding their Islamic faith identity. As it would be also important for our fellow American non-Muslims who are seeking assurance that we immigrant Muslims aren't trying to impose our foreign or some foreign values upon America. And this dream that I've had, this vision that I've had of building our flagship Cordoba House in New York was again rebranded by our detractors as the Ground Zero Mosque to arouse hostility against us. But as Doug pointed out, I've left that space, but the vision is still alive. And I'd like to remind you that thousands of, the thousands of mail and phone calls that we received was 100 to 1 in support of it, and we received thousands of letters from every state in the Union and from 46 foreign countries in support, including the State of Israel, which to me was very touching. 
And when I, was in, when I traveled to the Gulf and Southeast Asian Muslim countries, it was there that I discovered that America's stock value soared in the Muslim world because of the optics of a Jewish mayor supporting it in what is regarded in the Muslim world, New York City, one of the most demographically highly populated Jewish concentrations. And to get that kind of support from the mayor, from rabbis, and, and, and from the President of the United States was something that really caused many Muslims in the traditional Muslim countries to really respect and love America. And for this, I'm very proud. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, as we have all described, there's one more project I'd like to point out, and that is something that, uh, and these are the ideas that in, we inspire others with. And in a conversation I once had with the, right after that time, with the current Prime Minister of Malaysia, I proposed that what is needed, that the real battlefront was not between Muslims and America, or between Christians and Muslims, or Muslims and Jews, etc., but really between the extremists of all fa these faith traditions against the moderates of all these faith traditions. That was where the real battlefront lay. And what we needed was to develop strategic coalitions of multi-faith moderates to figure out ways and build into a movement that would combat and outweigh the influence and, imp and work of the extremists of all these faith traditions. So he spoke about a global movement of moderates, and David Cameron has been very excited about it and wants to partner with him. And this is something that perhaps if we huddle together, Doug, we might think of some ideas on how to build this moving forward. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, working in this space where the where the tires of religion hit the road of real life is as challenging as it is full of surprises. Doug and I have skid marks on our backs to show for that. But with your continued support and with encouragement like this, for which I'm sincerely grateful, I can do better than to thank God for having chosen this business for us. The reality of God's having done so is proven in that we can find fulfillment in no other work, nor can we actually choose another. Once again, I thank you, and God bless you all. And I'd like to know this book is already promised to Nancy Berg, my friend Nancy Berg, who said she knows Bud McFarlane from decades ago when she worked with the NSA. But I have a few copies, and a couple of other people have asked for it. Um, I have a few copies upstairs. And if I run out, just give me your business cards. We'll happy to send you one at complimentary of the Cordoba Initiative. Once again, thank you very much, and may God bless you all. Thank you.